Buy low and sell high. Versus Buy high and sell low business modeling. Produced by John Beasley at Canada Point Maritime School and Business Research Solutions. Buy low, sell high is one of the most common business models taught in business schools. It is a simple business model and in a few cases it may be the right business model to use. The buy low, sell high business model presumes that the objective is to buy goods and services upstream of your business process as cheap as possible, and to sell your products and services as high as possible to your customers. What is wrong with that business model? If the buy low and sell high business model is successful, the suppliers to the company are not making standard profit margins. The entire supply chain working for buy low and sell high is by definition not highly profitable. Buy low and sell high is squeezing every dollar possible out of its supply chain expenses. Since there is some possibility that the suppliers may go under buy low and sell high finds additional suppliers for the products and services they buy. This move by buy low and sell high to protect their supply chain sources increases the probability that their upstream suppliers will not be profitable. Downstream in the supply chain, buy low and sell high is selling their products for as much money as possible. This leaves many potential customers either unable or unwilling to pay for their products. Many of their current customers, using the same logic that buy low, sell high uses, are looking for lower cost sources for the products and services that buy low and sell high provides. The buy low and sell high strategy invites additional competition into the market. What we see is that buy low and sell high has created vulnerability and instability in the supply chain upstream of their company. If there is any disruption in production their suppliers may not have the resources to weather a downturn in the market. Buy low and sell high has also limited demand for their products and services by pricing them as high as possible. Their business strategy is to price their products so as not to satisfy the demand for their products and services. An additional problem with buy low and sell high is that by using their customers as their profit center they are collecting their profit at the end of their business process or business cycle. Buy low and sell high by waiting to receive a profit at the end of the business process has introduced a number of additional financial factors into their business. Common considerations are the current risk-free rate of return, the current inflation rate, and the risk or odds that the business venture will not pay off as expected. These financial considerations are used to discount the value of the income stream to a current dollar value or constant dollar value. Those factors currently add up as follows, if the inflation rate is the amount charged by the Federal Reserve to issue the money supply, 5%, and the business venture has a 95% probability of success, or a 5% risk, and T-bills are paying 1%, then the discount rate to buy low, sell high's income stream should be 11% annually, or 0.92% monthly. Any time a company uses the supply chain driver, the demand item, as the profit center, it is highly unlikely that the business can maximize profit on their supply chain. Their very act of using the demand item as the profit center minimizes the potential for sales growth. They are constricting the supply chain by using the demand item as a profit center. Consider using the entire process as the profit center and not the demand item. These are some of the more obvious issues facing a company using a buy low and sell high business model. Let's look at some examples of the buy low and sell high industry business models. The airline industry, the hotel industry, and the restaurant industry. Then we will look at other business model options. The original airline business model was a buy low and sell high business model. The airlines kept their planes in service for 30 or more years. They rented engines rather than buying new engines. They even rented airplanes on a short-term basis in an effort to keep their operating costs as low as possible. 
They charged as much as possible offering first class seating, business class seating, and tourist class seating. They were destroying the aircraft industry by avoiding buying new aircraft. Every effort was made to minimize expenses and maximize income, which hurt the supply chain. Then a new business model emerged, it could be called buy high and sell low. The function of this business model is to feed the supply chain rather than starve the supply chain. Equity funds used investor funds to buy stocks in many of the companies involved in the supply chain that was being developed. The investors in an airline, such as JetBlue or Southwest would take positions, buy stock, in all the companies that the airline used in their business operations, usually through an equity fund. It is rather like making a wager on black at a roulette table. In this business model, the passenger airline serves as the business driver used to pull products and services into the market. Very little profit is taken on the supply chain driver, which is passenger airline tickets. The profit is taken in developing and pulling products into the market. For example, the airline JetBlue set a goal of buying one new Airbus 300 every three months. Their business partners were companies that provided products and services to JetBlue, such as airplanes, jet fuel, tires, blue chips, DD coffee, etc. JetBlue charges whatever airfare is required to fill up the airplanes and cover their operating expenses. JetBlue makes a 3% return on investment. The function of JetBlue is to pull products into the supply chain. JetBlue is a supply chain feeder and not strictly speaking a profit center. The profit in this airline business model is being taken upstream of the passenger service, notably in deliveries of new Airbus 300 single quote S. The airline's supply chain, all the products and services that an airline consumes is worth vastly more than the profit the airline can hope to generate. JetBlue, for example, gives up about 5% to 7% profit in order to build and drive their supply chain. This buy high and sell low strategy feeds the supply chain and uses the demand item, passenger air travel to drive the business model. Investors buy into the entire supply chain created by JetBlue rather than only investing in the passenger airline industry. The investors are buying upstream in the supply chain. Not only does buy high and sell low feed the company's supply chain, it also makes it very difficult for a company using a buy low and sell high business model to compete. These companies are competing for market share but also their business models are competing against one another. The business models are at odds with one another. Each business model is designed with the intention of attracting investment capital and customer market share. Perhaps most importantly, look at when and where the majority of the profit is being taken in the buy high, sell low business model. The profit is being taken at the beginning of the business process rather than at the end of the process. By taking the profit upstream the profit is being taken in current dollars rather than in discounted dollars at the end of the process. This will become more clear when we look at business models for the hotel industry and cruise ship industry. The traditional hotel business model has operating costs of about 75%. The hotel provides as many services as possible in order to generate higher customer counts and higher revenues. The high operating costs mean that the hotel must have high occupancy rates. This requirement of high occupancy rates limits the number of hotels that can be built. Once again the traditional business model is limiting the supply chain. The investors in the hotel equity fund typically supplies the construction loan financing once they have the long-term financing in place. The investors in hotel development are typically companies that are invested in segments of the construction and hotel supply chain, such as building materials manufacturers, furnishings, bedding, carpeting, construction companies, developers, and hotel management companies. The materials suppliers make a profit on all the materials used in the hotel building project. Typically, they get their return in the first year. 
The building contractor makes a profit on building the hotel. The project developers borrow the money and add in the net present value of the required cash flows. Profit. The hotel will make over the life of the investment operation. Because interest rates are so low the hotel can support a larger loan payment. Just like in the housing boom between 2003 to 2008, the price of houses doubled in price because the cost of interest was cut in half. At these low interest rates it is possible to finance the land, the building construction, and include the net precise and value of the operating profit that the hotel needs to generate over the life of the investment, and take all that profit up front in this business process. In this way all the profit from the project is taken when the hotel receives its certificate of occupancy and gets its long-term financing. The cash flow from the hotel's operation is discounted to current value and added into the financing package. In essence the entire business transaction is finished. All the profit has been taken on this investment up front. The hotel has only to pay back the loan and pay the management company to operate the hotel. Since the hotel only has to earn enough to pay back the loan and pay for the management company, the amount of money they have to earn is much lower than with the traditional business model. Instead of having as many services as possible, such as restaurants, bars, spas, golf and boating, the hotel has as few profit centers as possible, cutting their operating expenses from 75% down to 25%. These hotels have minimum employees and provide minimum services. The Hotel Industry The hotel that has taken the discounted profit up front and does not have a number of services and profit centers does not need to have as high a rate of occupancy to service the debt load. In fact, the occupancy rate can be as low as 25% to 35% to cover all the operating expenses. Instead of having one hotel that has a 75% occupancy rate, the equity fund can build two or three hotels thereby feeding the materials and construction supply chain, while making more profit. A similar business model can be built for shopping plazas, chain restaurant locations, dollar stores, the cruise line industry, and convenience stores. The actual business these companies engage in is not being used to generate a profit, it is being used to service the loan. This is accomplished by taking all the profit in a business venture up front and financing the construction and the return on investment. The hotel developers might even go so far as to lease the land from the city, county or a non-profit with a 25, 50 or 99 year lease, thereby saving the expense of property tax for the life of the investment. The investment would likely be held as an LLC so that in the event the hotel defaulted on the loan, there would only be one creditor who would have the right to take possession of the property. In that sense, the lender's investment is secured. The restaurant industry is much like the hotel industry, except one major function of a restaurant supply chain is to move large quantities of food through the wholesale distribution channel at a reasonable profit. The restaurant may only make a few percent profit, but the restaurant business pays for the building, and serves as a distribution center for the wholesale food industry. The dollar stores would be at a disadvantage selling their products for one dollar and expecting to make a solid profit over a 10 or 20 year investment period. If the dollar store's primary purpose is the use of selling of dollar store items to service a loan that pays for the building and includes the net present value of the anticipated profits that the dollar store will generate, then that is an outstanding business plan. Think about this again, by taking the profit in advance, for the life of the investment, we are eliminating risk on return 5% to 10%. Eliminating the effects of inflation 5% to 10% and we account for the time value of money by discounting future cash flows profits into current dollars. From this point forward all the business has to do is make enough money to service the mortgage and manage the business process. The original ship liner service was operated like the airliner service. 
It was a buy low, sell high industry. In the 1950s and 1960s the ship liner industry went bankrupt and many of the liner ships were bought up and used for vacation ships or cruise ships. As these original cruise ships aged and needed to be replaced a new business model had to be developed to pay for new ships. The function of the cruise line industry is to pay for the building of ships. In the process the steel industry benefits, the diesel or bunker industry benefits and the food industry benefits. The business model is reversed so that the profit is taken when the ships are built and delivered. The cruise line industry functions as a means to pay the mortgage on the ships, rather than as a profit center. The profit is taken when the ships are constructed and delivered to the cruise line. It should be understood that a profit can be taken at any point in the supply chain. Ideally, the profit should be taken at the point where it maximizes profit in the entire supply chain. The earlier the profit is taken in the supply chain the less profit that needs to be taken. It is an axiom that it is difficult if not impossible to take a profit on the supply chain driver, the demand item and to maximize profit on the supply chain. Buy high and sell low is basically the same financial model as the one used by the Federal Reserve Banking System. The profit is borrowed into existence and then paid off. This business model has been operational in the USA at least since 1913. One can argue that Henry Ford used this feeding the supply chain business model in the development of Ford Motor Company. Consider reading his two books, 